So a couple things I might want to do here. Remember I did that uh, volume parameter of this guy, right? I did that volume parameter and I said I wanted to look at the temperature of the solid. Well now I have a time history option. And I can say show, and it won't just show me a single value at the bottom. Now it should show me a nice graph. Now it will take a little while to calculate some of these depending on what they are. So while it's doing that, I want to talk about file management. So file management, uh, just all I'm really talking about is how the files are stored on your hard drive and what to do about them. So here is the folder where I have these files, SOLIDWORKS files uh, stored. And in this folder, you're going to see my files, some other random folders, but then you see these one, two, three folders, right? Those folders are created by the solver. Obviously, the first one is created by the first study, and the first study here is a steady state study. The result is 1.fld, and it's not huge, but it's not tiny. Uh, these other values are important too, but the 1.fld, that's the actual sort of result file. These subfolders are created as needed, but this is the second one, and so I'm going to come in here and look at my results, and you have these other FLD files. Look at this, R0, 34, 54, 59, 63, 66. These correspond to iteration numbers and it only saves the ones that matter. So for example, it took 34 iterations to get to the first five second time step. Then it took a 20 from there, and then down here down the road, remember it just took one to get each one. These are spaced evenly by physical time, not by solver time, not by iterations, which is a lot more convenient for what I'm trying to do. So there's the value and I can look at the time history, or I can export this to Excel, but basically it gave me a full accounting of the values over time. And if I look at the maximum solid temperature, you can see it stays right around 293, and then it starts to bump up, and we're still in a really good place, right, after a couple minutes, which is not that unexpected. All right, <clears throat> export to Excel, and we'll take a look at that real quick. And there's our plot. <clears throat> and there's our plot showing the variation over time uh, using that data. So anytime you export something to Excel, this is how it's going to look. You're going to get the data, raw data, and then you're going to get a bunch of graphs for the various different parameters of interest.